Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for today's BU Industry Insiders webinar, Lessons from the Runway, the Power of Dressing the Stars. My name is Jeff Murphy, and I'm a member of the Career Programs team here in the BU Office of Alumni Relations. Today's webinar is sponsored by Boston University Alumni Relations and is offered to our 326,000 alumni around the globe. Throughout your career, BU is committed to helping you define and achieve your professional goals. We aim to do this by providing alumni with access to a series of valuable online tools and social media communities. I'd like to welcome all of our alumni joining us today from places uh, far away like Yokohama, Japan, France, Puerto Rico, Miramar, Florida, Aurora, Colorado, Old Orchard Beach in Maine, Teaneck, New Jersey, Lots of alumni who signed up from New York and Los Angeles, and as always, lots of Massachusetts alumni from towns like Salem, Melrose, Waltham, Sudbury, Stoughton, Lincoln, and more. Before I introduce today's speaker, some brief housekeeping notes. As you know by now, this webinar is being hosted on the Adobe Connect online meeting platform. If you experience any trouble with the audio or visual portions of this presentation, I'll ask that you please contact Adobe Connect directly at 1-800-422 3623. You'll see that phone number at the bottom of your screen right now, Adobe Connect 1-800-422-3623. Today's presentation is being recorded and will soon be made available for on-demand viewing on the Alumni Association website, which you can find at www.bu.edu slash alumni. Our speaker today is very eager to answer any questions you may have, and you're welcome to submit them throughout the presentation using the Q&A chat box at the bottom of your screen. We hope to get to as many questions as we can during today's webinar. It's now my pleasure to introduce our speaker for the day. Presenting from Los Angeles, California is College of Communications alumna, Alexander Narofshin. Alexander is the Global VIP Relations Director at Tom Ford International, where she oversees all celebrity and red carpet dressing for the brand. She also works alongside Mr. Ford on the film side and most recently was the associate producer on Nocturnal Animals, released in 2016 by Focus Features, starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Amy Adams. Uh, on a personal note, I thought that fan, uh, film was fantastic, and I encourage all of you to, to see it if you haven't. Um, but more importantly, Alexander was born and raised in Los Angeles, California, and moved to Boston in 1998 to attend BU, where she completed the College of General Studies in 2000 and graduated from the College of Communication in 2002, majoring in advertising with a concentration in psychology. Alexander moved back to Los Angeles in 2002, where she held jobs at two of the biggest talent agencies, Creative Artists Agency, also known as CAA, and Endeavor Agency, which is currently known as William Morris Endeavor, or WME, respectively. Uh, transitioning into the realm of fashion public relations, Alexandra then worked at Harrison and Schriftman before joining Tom Ford International in 2004. Alex, thank you so much for being here today. I'm really excited to hear uh, a little bit more about your experience, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and get your first slide up and running, and then the floor is all yours. Hi, guys. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to say a big thanks to Corey McIsaac, Jeff Murphy, Daniel Gardner, and the alumni team. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be here to talk to you a little bit about the work that I do. Um, I had such an incredible college experience at BU. Um, and uh, good to be here. So as Jeff said, I was born and raised in LA. Um, when I got to Boston, it was a big culture shock for me. Um, I was very much in awe of its diversity. Um, just, you know, the great big melting pot of people, ideas, and cultures was always inspiring to me. Uh, fashion is something I've always found interesting, um, so much more than on a surface level. In college, um, I remember walking down the street on Calm Ave, and I'd walk to class, you know, I'd look around, and there was so much that would tell me about people and who they were without even having to say a word. And so much of it is from how they would sort of style themselves, you know, and it, it has nothing really to do with how fancy or expensive the clothing was, but, you know, the ways that you put the colors together, the fabrics, um, the items that you choose to pair together, it really, it always said a lot to me. And it was around this time where I really started to think about how fashion is sort of a language in itself. I started uh, CGS in 1998. Um, I've made some of my lifelong friends there and some of my most fond memories from college are actually all at CGS. Um, I went on to graduate from Calm in 2002. 
Although at the time of graduation, I still wasn't sure where my passions lied. Um, and this actually brings us to the first question of the day. Um, and this goes out to, I know there are a lot of recent graduates and um, some students and just overall, how many of you sort of knew what you wanted to do? Because I actually had, you know, I had no idea. In fact, I really don't even know that <laughs> I knew <laughs> until like maybe six years ago, which is crazy. Okay, so it's sort of split up, it's 50-50. Um, I knew I wanted to do something creative. Um, again, I had majored in advertising, minored in psychology. I had taken some classes in screenwriting, screenwriting but I still, you know, I wasn't sure. Um, anyway, uh, the best advice I can give to, okay, so it, it looks like a few of you do know, but not everyone. Um, the best advice I can give to everyone is just start working and start moving forward. Even if you're not sure if it's what you want, life works in funny ways and it always kind of opens paths to where you need to be. And funny enough, we all sort of hopefully usually end up where we're supposed to. Um, so people ask me, the first thing that people usually ask me is how I ended up at Tom Ford and how I came to get this job. So after graduation, I really actually wanted to move to New York. Um, I'm the youngest of three girls and my parents were like, you know, you're coming home. I'd actually I'd graduated. It was a year after 9-11 and, you know, the world was kind of a scary place. And, you know, looking back, it would have been totally fine to move there, but you know, in that moment, it was, you know, no one kind of, I don't know, my parents were like, you're coming home. So um, I knew that I wanted to do something creative. I wasn't sure. I also grew up loving and watching movies, and I knew I wanted to maybe end up in the industry somehow. Um, so I started in the agency space. Um, the agencies are sort of known as the gateway into the industry. This is where all of Hollywood, including talent, writers, producers, directors are all represented. So CAA, Creative Artists Agency, is sort of the, you know, they are the biggest talent agency in the world. Um, I started over there. Um, later on, I moved over to their competitor, WME, who they're pretty major right now too. At the time they were smaller, but they're kind of also taken over the world. Um, as many of you know, Ari Gold from Entourage represents it best. His character is based on Ari Emanuel, the real life Ari Gold, who started WME. Um, and while I didn't want to be an agent, some of the strongest relationships and biggest lessons I've learned were actually cultivated over there. Um, it really is the perfect place to learn the structure, politics, and DNA of the industry. In 2004, the big story in entertainment was that Tom Ford had left Gucci Group after being there 10 years and turning the brand into a multi-billion dollar company. He decided he wanted to move to Hollywood and make his way into show business. And he landed at CAA for directorial representation. Now, at that point, I had been gone from CAA for about a good year and a half. I did keep in touch uh, with a good friend of mine. His name's Billy Hawkins, whom he was in the CAA mailroom when I worked there at the time. And it's funny how it all sort of happened. I ran into him at a party and he told me that he had they had taken Tom Ford on as a director client and that Tom was moving to LA and needed an assistant. And if I knew anybody looking for the job. Um, in that moment, I knew I had to get this. I mean, I literally, there's nothing in the world I wanted more. And I knew that there were also a long list of people who probably wanted this too. So I knew I had to do something to make this happen. Um, Billy told me where to fax my resume and that the rest would be up to me. And you know, it's funny, in that moment in time, my friendship with Billy would set the path for the course of my professional life and career. You know, our casual hellos and goodbyes when he was in the mailroom, dropping off my mail, when I was at um, my cubicle at my desk at CAA, um, that was literally the catalyst for me cr crossing paths with Tom. Um, one piece of advice I will give you, this business is extremely ego-driven. 
So it's very important to stay grounded. Um, and just to be kind and to keep in touch with the friends you make along the way, because oftentimes it's these little details that will take you down roads that will literally lead you to some of the most important moments of your life. So um, I fax in my resume, I get a call, and um, it was from Mr. Ford's then assistant. She had been with him for 10 years at Gucci and left when he did. Um, I went on a few rounds of interviews, and I got a call back to meet with the big boss um, at his home. I was super nervous. I remember before walking into his house, I literally, I got in and I had to sit on my hands because I was so nervous, they were shaking. Um, and I just remember thinking, you know, I wanted to appear so cool and, you know, just relaxed and not nervous at all. So um, I think I did get away with it. Um, Anyway, he was just as magnetic and charming in real life. Um, I felt in that moment, even if I didn't get the job, that I would never forget that afternoon. Um, in the end, uh, it did come together, and uh, I heard nothing for about three weeks, and then I got a phone call, and they offered me the position as his assistant. So, it is 2004. And there we were. It was me and Mr. Ford in our little office in West Hollywood. Um, and now the plan was for him to go into film. Uh, at this point in his career, he never wanted to design another piece of clothing again. Um, so he started looking for a film project. And in the process, of course, he got the design edge again. Um, and he launched first with eyewear in 2005, and then beauty in 2006, then menswear in 2007, a Single Man um, was our first movie in 2008. In the fall of 2010, we launched our first women's collection. And then, of course, we made Nocturnal in uh, 2015, which was released last year. So Tom made um, his home in London for many years, and I sort of oversaw things out of the L.A. office. Um, our design studio is based, was based in London, um, and that's when the, where the men's and women's collections are developed. Our corporate offices, um, we opened them up in New York in 2007, and our film and celebrity office is based here in LA. Um, in the last year, Mr. Ford made a decision to move to Los Angeles full time. And so we literally just finished processing the visas for our women's design team. They've all moved out here. Um, men's is going to stay in London for the moment, but it, it's a very exciting time for us and just to be in LA in general. So my job and responsibilities are to oversee celebrity dressing, and that includes everyone that wears Tom Ford on the red carpet globally. Go to the next slide here. Um, this brings us to our next question. How many of you would buy something if you saw a celebrity wearing it? Just out of curiosity. Okay. Well, I have to say it's 50, it's, you know, a lot of it is subconscious. We don't even realize half the time the things that we're picking up on. So, yeah, okay. So it looks like about 71% of you would um, and 28% of you wouldn't. So uh, this is actually a really important part of our business. Um, getting a celebrity photographed in one of your designs is equivalent to millions of dollars in advertising. Um, celebrity gifting initiatives is something... You know, a lot of brands gift celebrities. But this is something we're very careful with because we don't really believe, oh, Mr. Ford believes that, you know, if you get something for free or if you get something cheap or if you get something easy, you won't value it. You won't care for it. So um, a lot of what we stand for, um, we're just very selective in this process. Um, it is extremely competitive out there. Um, so let, but you know what, when they do get something and they love it, there's no guarantees because we also, you know, a lot of brands pay people to wear them. That's just something we've never done. Um, and Hollywood has changed a little bit in that, you know, those big studio days of, you know, those paychecks that are 20, 30, 40 million dollars, they don't really exist anymore. So, you know, a lot of talent now, they look to endorsements and, um, just, you know, in life, I'm sure you've all sort of started to notice that, you know, there are more and more celebrities um, that have attached their names to brands. Um, and, you know, and that, that works for a lot of people. It's not something that we do. 
Um, but you know, in the end, um, you know, everybody wins. So, um, can you go to the next slide? Okay. So, uh, what I do is a very highly curated process. Um, some brands, uh, believe in the more the merrier. We are much more uh, tight in our process. Mr. Ford likes to dress very, very small number of people each season. Um, and it can be hard because there are so many wonderful people out there, um, but it's really about keeping it as minimal as possible, all the while making the biggest statement and most um, memorable moments and images. Uh, we feel it's more effective this way. Again, I think uh, the hardest part of my job is having to sometimes turn down um, really, truly spectacular talents. But, you know, if we don't do it in that moment, we always we we always try to find a way um, in the future. So um, Mr. Ford has been in the business for a long time. Um, he has a lot of relationships, which he's cultivated from his very long fashion and now film career. We're always very lucky to have a long list of people who are very open and exciting, excited to wearing us. Um, the way that it works is the requests usually come to us from a stylist or a publicist or a manager. Sometimes um, the celebrity themselves will reach out or send a text and say, you know, I've got this event coming up. Is there, you know, anything you might have I can wear? Um, so, you know, again, it's not something it goes, oh, sorry, I don't want to skip ahead. <laughs> sorry, guys. Okay, and some of the questions that we ask when considering who to dress are, what is their relationship with Mr. Ford? Are they a friend of his? Um, number two, is this, a pers is this person a good representation of our brand? What do they stand for? What do they represent? Uh, number three, what projects are they currently involved with? And does it make sense for us to get involved? And finally, number four, how many other people are we dressing at the moment? Are we dressing too many people? Are we dressing anyone else who might be attached to the same project? We also like to think about what other brands they've been involved with in the past, because um, that's also something that's relevant to us. Um, Again, we tend to choose only a few people per season and focus on them. Uh, same with the awards. And for the award show, we'll literally pick one woman and that will be it. Um, and again, some brands, they like to cover as much on the carpet as they can. Um, and again, that's great for them. Doesn't work for us. We choose one woman for Golden Globes, one woman for Oscars, one woman per premiere. Um, and that's how we do it. There's also a lot of work and research that goes into this. Um, you really have to do the work before the nominations are even announced and see where the buzz is and think about what the awards predictions are because by the time the nominees are announced, they've already had the dresses picked out and the designers confirmed. I mean, it's crazy how fast it works. Um, also, this is where it gets a little tricky again because of the endorsements. A lot of people have contracts. Um, you know, literally, you know, Dior, I think it was around 12 million uh, they paid to a certain actress for wearing them on the carpet for like three years. I mean, it's it's pretty spectacular, the numbers that are out there. Um, but, you know, and Dior is a wonderful brand and uh, they are beautiful and um, much respect to them. But again, it sometimes makes it a little challenging uh, for us to compete with that. But so far, you know, it's it's worked out well for us. So um, that said, dressing celebrities is important to any brand, whether it's an actor, an actress, an athlete, a social influencer, and so forth. These are the people that literally um, drive sales and make our worlds go round. And it's a great way to showcase our designs and, and the pieces that we've worked so hard to create. Um, and of course, Mr. Ford does sign off and approve on everything that is publicly seen and worn. Um, he has his ideas. Um, he's super visual. So as soon as there's a request, he'll know exactly what he wants to recommend. Um, and a lot of the times he'll custom make um, beautiful looks for award seasons um, for nominees. Um, so and the way that it works is I would go on a fitting with our tailor and uh, if there's a stylist, a stylist would be there too. Um, it's sometimes it's just us. We go in, we try the outfit on and um, hopefully we can get it all done in one or two fittings. Um, 
So I've posted a couple of images of some of my favorite looks and favorite moments. Um, on the top left, we dressed Justin Timberlake and Jay-Z for the suit and tie uh, music video that came out a couple years ago. That was a lot of fun to do. The set was a lot of fun to be on. Uh, Julianne Moore is just a lovely person inside and out. And um, I have to say, she's probably one of the most humble people that I've ever crossed paths with in this business. Um, so uh, she's been a big um, supporter of Tom. Uh, next, we have the lovely Beyonce Knowles. Um, she is I'm a, a true superstar down to her core. Um, she walks into a room and you literally are just in awe of her. Um, and that was her wearing the Tom Ford 61 jersey when uh, it was at a performance, but it was also um, along side Jay-Z when he was uh, at the time when he had come out with the Tom Ford song, which was also very exciting for us. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow at the top right, that was our very first women's dress from the women's collection um, that we did on a carpet. And it was a really big moment for us. It really, really was. And uh, we were so, so lucky um, to have her wear it. Um, and next we have Jake at the Cannes Film Festival wearing the Navy James Bond tux, which is one of my favorites. Uh, over here we have Tom Brady and Giselle. Um, I have to say, right after Julianne, Mr. Brady is the coolest, most down-to-earth, kindest person. Um, this is the Metropolitan Museum Gala. It happens the first Monday in May every year. Um, I'm sure most of you have heard of it. Um, he is wearing a, so it's sort of a lavender charcoal evening jacket that we created for him. Um, Giselle was wearing Stella McCartney that evening, um, but it was a really exciting time for us. We had never done um, a jacket like this, and the theme was, um, I believe, machine and metal and future and robot, so we wanted to try and stick with the theme. Anyway, that was a lot of fun to do. Rihanna wearing our dress from spring, summer 16 was a great moment. Um, anytime you can get any cover, especially a Vogue cover, is you know a huge moment for any brand. So we were so excited to have that happen. Uh, next to her is the great Russell Wilson, plays for the Seattle Seahawks. Um, amazing dude, really nice guy, loves fashion, knows his stuff, and looks great in Tom Ford. And of course, Margot Robbie. Um, this was at the Oscars in 2016. Um, she was nominated and she looked absolutely stunning. And we were so, so excited to work with her. And I truly, I have to say, I'm so lucky to have worked with everyone that I have in my career. And I really, I do love everybody. These are just some of my favorite looks. So moving right on to the film stuff. Um, Quick question for you all. How many have seen A Single Man? Okay, amazing. I think everyone here has seen it. Um, or most people here have seen it. Okay, oh, that's so nice. Um, so creating one runway shows is a lot like creating a movie. Um, and, you know, I'll get into that a little later, but, um, you know, coming from fashion, when we started making a single man, it was really, it was sort of a scary, a new experience for all of us. You know, Mr. Ford, he really, I mean, he just nails it in everything he does, but this was something that was like, oh my God, we're actually making a movie. Like, it was the most exciting, scary, exhilarating thing. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of people had assumed because it's Tom Ford, it was probably really easy and it, you know, everything sort of fell into place very easily, but it actually didn't. Um, we had to work very hard to make this movie happen. And, um, you know, it was in 2007 when, you know, it was in development, the conversations had started. And I remember it was during that big recession where our, um, film, the finance people pulled out, literally. 
And it was just like, what are we going to do? And, and Mr. Ford has been open about this. He decided in that moment, you know what? He's going to invest in his own movie. So he did do it on his own. Um, we did end up making a single man. And for those of you who, who may not have seen it, um, it is Tom Ford's directorial debut. He adapted it from a book by the same title, written by Christopher Isherwood um, in the 1960s about a man who is living through what appears to be the last day of his life and how he chooses to spend it. Um, it was sold at the Toronto Film Festival in 2009 to Harvey Weinstein at the Weinstein Company. Um, and it was nominated for numerous awards, including three Golden Globe nominations. Uh, making this movie was such a special project to be a part of. Um, the pace of being on a film set was so much fun. Um, I remember what I was doing. When, whenever I watched that movie, I literally remember what I was doing, where I was standing, and what I was thinking about throughout the filming of each and every scene. As many of you know, um, there are so many different elements and moving parts that need to come together in perfect harmony. Um, literally, hundreds of people need to be working together just to make like a three minute scene happen. You know, and it doesn't matter how much money you put into a movie, it doesn't matter who your cast is, it doesn't matter who the director is. I mean, if one element is out of place, like if everything is great and your film editor sucks, then you're screwed. Or like, you know, it just takes one small thing. So. After that, it sort of gave me a new appreciation for films. It's like every movie you see is kind of like a mini miracle. Um, so um, anyway, we did work with an incredible costume designer. Um, she actually worked with us on both films. Her name is Ariane Phillips. Uh, she is a pro and she's been nominated for numerous awards, including an Oscar for her work on uh, Madonna's movie, W.E. Um, she's actually also Madonna's stylist and she has styled for, she's been with Madonna for so many years. Um, and she's also worked with Lenny Kravitz, Courtney Love, um, just a whole bunch of people. So, uh, Tom and Ariane have known each other for many years, which, which is, you know, it also made the process that much more natural and just sort of right for us. Um, and for me, it was especially interesting to watch Mr. Ford create a whole world of characters and their outfits and their hair and how they speak and who they are. You know, um, he is celebrated for his attention to detail and it definitely did not stop on the runway. Um, let me, oops. So uh, here are a couple moments of a um, couple stills from the film, Colin Firth and Julianne. And then we have some moments of Mr. Ford doing his director thing. Um, you know, there was, I'll tell you guys a funny story. Um, there was a scene in A Single Man where there's a big classroom that Colin Firth is teaching. And um, I had been asked to sit in as an extra, as a featured extra. And Tom had the hairstylist redo my hair he had me go back and had them redo my hair three times until it was done right. And finally, in the end, he literally asked for a comb and a can of hairspray and said he would do it himself because, and this is all for an extra role, no less. Um, but this is a testament to, again, his attention to detail and how important it is. And we had an amazing hairstyling team on set, um, but he had a very specific vision for a beehive. Um, and you know what's such a bummer? I didn't include the picture and I wish that I had because the scene actually got cut, um, which sucks a little bit, but you know what? It's all good. Just the experience of being there and just being on that set with these incredible people. And of course, Tom Ford playing with your hair, you know, always good fun. Um, again, uh, so we wrapped the film and it was nominated for uh, numerous awards. Let's go to the next slide. Um, those are the guys at the Venice Film Festival. Um, Nicholas Holt, who played Kenny. Of course, Tom Ford. Um, Colin Firth, who played George Falconer. And Matthew Good. And then, of course, we have Tom and Julianne, the Hollywood Film Awards last year, where she presented an award to Tom. All right. So we will now go into Nocturnal Animals. Um, so I've got two questions here. First of all, how many of you have seen Nocturnal?
Okay. So it's about 3060 or 4050. Um, okay, great to know. Um, and another, another quick question I'm going to throw in is how many of you can sort of recognize the parallels between fashion and film? Um, and this is kind of an open question. There's no right and wrong. Um, there's so many different directions this can go into, um, or it can be just a yes or no. Um, yeah, anyway. An open-ended question like this, you might, it might take our readers or our uh, participants a couple seconds to, to type their answers. Right. So okay. um, I'll, I'll leave this up for a few minutes until you tell me to, to move it away. Okay. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, the fashion in the film. Um, you know, it's interesting because on the fashion side, um, Mr. Ford is, you know, very much focused on the collections and every detail. And in the movie, um, you sort of have to talk about your vision with your team and then allow them to just delegate and allow them to take it on. Um, there are many parallels, you know, making a movie is kind of designing a runway show. Um, you know, you're creating characters, you're creating a world. Um, you know, Mr. Ford grew up with the classics, you know, he loved the women, dinner at eight, um, Rebecca, you know, he was a big Hitchcock guy. And if you really take a good look, at all of his collections during his time at Gucci, at Saint Laurent, and here at Tom Ford, you can always catch a little bit of the spirit of Hollywood. Um, and yeah, no, these are all great answers. Um, and it doesn't always stop with the clothing, the landscapes, the backgrounds, you know, the art, you know, it's all a part of it. Um, you're, you're always creating, essentially. Um, so Nocturnal Animals, we shot last fall in Los Angeles. Uh, that was another story adapted for the screen by Mr. Ford. It's a psychological thriller, and the message of this film is to hold on to people that you love um, and don't let them go. Uh, I was very excited to be brought on as associate producer on this film. So share a little bit of, um, share some of the stills. There we have Jake at a very intense moment of the film. I won't give it away, but those of you who've seen it know. Um, this movie was especially exciting for me because it was a little different. Than a single man and that we had a huge ensemble cast this time around, including um, Jake, Amy Adams, Michael Shannon, Aaron Johnson, Isla Fisher, um, we also featured a lot of art by some very, very exciting artists, including Alexander Calder, Andy Warhol, Damien Hirst. Uh, a lot of the art in the film is actually Mr. Ford's personal art that he had removed and placed onto set. Um, we did spend a lot of time in the Mojave Desert uh, filming it for West Texas, which was also pretty incredible to do. Um, we spent two weeks in the middle of nowhere. Um, and... These are sort of some of the behind the scenes. So there are, there are three villains in the movie, and there's one very, very bad guy played by Aaron Johnson. And uh, the two guys in the photo with me are the sidekicks. Um, they were very scary in this movie. Those of you who've seen it know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, this is us in the Mojave Desert um, in the airport hangar. I literally was exhausted. It was so late at night. Um, you know, when we shot all these scenes at night and it, it, they were pretty intense, but lots of fun to do nevertheless. Um, and there you have Mr. Ford um, speaking with Michael Shannon, um, advising him on his thoughts on the next scene. Um, there we have another shot of Mr. Ford and Jake. Um, and this scene, Jake is sort of wandering uh, the Mojave Desert by himself. Um, and then we have another moment where uh, this is, uh, I don't know if you can see a body on the floor next to Mr. Ford. It's actually a body double. <laughs> this was also sort of an incredible moment um, in the film without without giving away anymore. And of course, um, the awards. 
So Aaron Johnson won Golden Globe for Best Actor or Best Supporting Actor in this film, which was a great, great moment for us and um, really a testament to Mr. Ford and his directing, producing, and writing. Um, we're all so proud of him and to be a part of this project. And of course, Tom with the lovely Amy Adams, uh, that was taken at the Venice Film Festival, um, where uh, the film was nominated and it won the Silver Lion Award, which was a, a huge accolade at the Venice Film Festival. Um, there are just a few more, uh, Tom and Aaron at the Golden Globes. And uh, the last picture is one of my favorites. Um, you know, Mr. Ford is so connected um, and is really um, genuine with his attachments and connections and friendships with people. And you feel this. You truly feel this when you know him. Um, and again, I, I feel very lucky to be where I am and to do what I do. Um, and he is someone who has always believed in me. Um, and for that, I am so grateful. Um, hopefully we will do another movie soon. I'm not sure how soon, but <laughs> I know that, um, he loves doing them right now. We're focusing on the fashion side, but, um, but that's really it. And, um, I'm so happy to be here and, and share my story with you guys. And I'm happy to answer any questions on the film or the fashion side for any of you. Alex, thanks for, for walking us through the last couple so of years of your career. Turn it back over to Jeff. While we're wait, uh, we'll wait for our, our guests to type in any questions that they have. And, and those of you who are uh, listening in, what a great chance to, to talk to somebody on the inside of a, of a major uh, industry. Um, but Alex, I would get us kicked off. I'm just curious, you know, to know, obviously Mr. Ford seems like somebody who uh, is very artistic and, and really has passions, but how much of his getting into the film business was really about creating additional vehicles to advertise his fashion business? Is that a calculated thing or is it really just an exploring passion project? Well, I'm very, I'm I'm so happy. I am so happy that you asked this question. Um, completely separate. He made it a point when we were in pre-production, when we were having our meetings with our art director, with our props person, with wardrobe, you know, they would come up to Tom and they would say, well, how about we use these Tom Ford glasses and this vintage Tom Ford jet? And he literally shut it down. He is like, no. He's like, this movie is going to have nothing to do with my fashion career. I don't want to pull anybody out of the moment and take it back to, you know, an advertising thing. So literally everything that you guys saw, I mean, people sent me emails and they're like, where can we get those glasses? I'm like, those glasses are Celine. They are not Tom Ford. So a great, great question, Jeff. You know, he, um, he is such a cinephile himself and for him um the important part of the whole process was really just to make it about the movie and about these characters and about their struggles in in their world um sure. and their journey um, so we've got a question from rebecca thank you for asking that. Uh, rebecca just began her career on the film side uh, alex you mentioned learning how to navigate the politics of the industry can you speak a bit more in, uh, to your advice for uh, getting through that when you're you're just starting out. Yes, I can. So let me tell you something. In general, any industry that you're going to go into, there's always going to be, no matter where you work, in any office, no matter who you talk to, there's always going to be a bully. There's always going to be someone, particularly in entertainment this is, it really truly is a crazy world. And, you know, it's so sad to see what's happened with, you know, the Weinstein stuff. Um, but uh, not even that extreme. It just, lots of different things exist on so many levels. You just always have to be super gracious. Um, just be kind. Do not let anybody get to you. Um, because it seems like, you know, on that note, there are a lot of wonderful people that work in this industry. I have to say there are truly incredible people, but there are, you know, there's always going to be haters. There are always going to be people who are, you just never know. So one thing I would say, um, I wouldn't always talk about everything, you know, keep certain things to yourself until you really know who you can trust, do everything and do it with a smile. Um, there's a reason why this is the hardest business to get into. Um, you know, I'm 38 right now. And when I started, 
you know, there were a few people, you know, we all kind of started out doing the same thing. And some of those people didn't want to do it. They're like, I can't handle the egos. I don't, I don't, you know, no one can talk to me that way, you know, but listen, that is the way of the world. It's your rite of passage. I have had, you know, I've had some mean bosses. I really have. And in the end, I feel like I was so blessed to cross paths with Tom but I, I also really, I had paid my dues. Believe me, I can't tell you guys. Like, I literally have been to hell and back, okay? I will say it. But I, I stuck in there. And again, I did my job. I did it with a smile. It freaking sucks in the beginning. Nothing comes easy. But I'm telling you, it's so, so, so rewarding in the end. It really is. So just, there are days. There are going to be days when you're going to be like, you know, I can't believe this person talked to me this way. You know, definitely always stand up for yourself, you know, have integrity, but don't take yourself too seriously. Don't take other people too seriously. Just go with the flow and keep your eye on the prize. It, Alex, it I'm will curious, pay did, uh, off. Um, it takes time, to but it follow will up on that question, if you've experienced a difference in, in sort of the, the culture that you're talking about in on the film side versus the fashion side, Do you see sort of two separate cultures for those two angles or is it really all one and the same or, you know, do you see a difference? No, it's different. It's definitely different. Um, And I'll tell you how, you know, fashion is a very, um, it's a very fast paced business. Um, And, you know, it, it seems oftentimes people are stressed and they're running around and they're making things happen. And there's like, you know, so it, it sometimes can feel a little stressful, but in the end, um, it is so rewarding in those moments where, you know, your collection, you know, you get an amazing review or you see like, you know, the Rihanna's or the Beyonce's of the world wearing it and people are excited about it. So, um, you know, film is, it felt a little bit more relaxed to me. You know what I mean? And I was probably the only person on both sets in high heels platforms, <laughs> but you know, I got to represent and you weren't allowed, you're not allowed to wear open toe shoes. It's like a union thing, which I ignored, which I probably shouldn't have, but you know, it's a lot more relaxed on set. You know, people show up, they're like in jeans and sweats and it's easy. Um, Mr. Ford did not. He pretty much wore a suit every day on set. And um, I wore, you know, I've got my little uniform too. So um, overall, uh, film sets feel a little bit more relaxed. Um, Later on during the press junkets and all that stuff, it it can feel a little stressful, um, rightfully so, you know, but um, that's really, I guess. Question from Sajan uh, or Sajan, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. On the fashion side, how do you ensure that the talent evokes the Tom Ford brand with jewelry, accessories, makeup, et cetera? That's a good question. So, um, you know, it's hard because we really like to, we really will only dress someone if it's a full look. So if they're wearing our dress, we really, really have to encourage that, you know, they wear our shoes and they wear our bags. And listen, sometimes, you know, we're totally understanding and flexible. You know, sometimes they will have a pair of shoes that they'll love. And you know what? If they feel beautiful in it, that will show. And we want them to feel good and wear our look the best that they can. Um, Jewelry, you know, we do make jewelry, so we try to work our stuff in. Um, We don't do fine jewelry. So obviously, like the Harry Winstons or the Bulgaries or the Cartiers, you know, um, we're totally open to that stuff. Um, And, you know, everyone's really receptive and we all kind of work together. You know, people are oftentimes, you know, they invite us into, you know, have a say um, or they'll email us the photos and they'll say, um, this is what I'm thinking of doing jewelry wise or do you have any direction for me? Um, and, you know, and it's really great, you know, even with hair and makeup, you know, what vision do you have? Or is there any inspiration? And we do have a beauty line. So we always appreciate that stuff. Um, but that said, Mr. Ford, his objective really at the end of the day, I can't tell you guys, like, if you feel good in what you wear, it makes the difference in the world. And that is, that, that is what we opt for. So we're, we're going to let you do what makes you feel good. And, you know, it's always nice to be brought into the conversation and come up 
with it together, but you know, question we're from always Lisa. open. Uh, Lisa works with students in a college career center. Uh, and her question is, what are one or two things that uh, college students can do to prepare themselves for a career in film, mm -hmm. fashion, et cetera? You know, I would say internships are always helpful. I get so many resumes and the ones that stand out, um, you know, and I get people working, want to, wanting to work on the film side. The things that stand out are the internships and the experiences. You know, when I, um, when I applied for the job at CAA, they, I called them, they're like, we're not hiring, sorry, literally. Like, I called every day for like a month and they're like, sorry, we're not hiring. So finally, I, you know, I was on the phone and I was like, well, can I just come in and sit down for an informational? And they're like, mm, they're like, that's fine, but we're not hiring. I'm like, I got it the first 27 times. <laughs> so I go in and it's funny. I actually, I sat down with the HR lady. We had a great conversation and she offered me a position on the spot. A lot of these big companies, um, just because of the volume of resumes they receive, you know, it can be tricky, but you got to get creative. You got to find a way to get your foot in the door. Um, I would also, if you have any mentors or, you know, if you can, um, you know, if you know anyone, even if you know someone who knows someone who's in the business, um, even if you can sit down with them, you know, for 20 minutes and just have a conversation and pick their brain. Um, from again, this goes back to what I was talking about, you know, from things like that, I can't tell you like, you know, maybe they'll hear of a job opening and they'll think of you. And I can't tell you literally it's things like that, that make the world go round, meet as many people as you can go to as many events as you can. Um, and, and do the internships. I know they can sometimes, you know, but just do them, do them as much as you can, um, watch as many movies as you can, um, read books, but really it's just about getting yourself out there and meeting as, as many people as you can, because one of those people- So Alex, this leads be, uh, nicely into your last an slide. Uh, you talked about the importance of just meeting as many people as, as you can. I, I, I know that you're probably open to connecting with some of our BU alumni that are on the, the webinar today, right? Yes, definitely. Definitely. You guys, anything you need, I'm, you know, I've been in so many of your shoes and even if, you know, it doesn't matter what your background or many of you I know are already established um, and professional individuals, if there are any questions um, or anything you guys want to know. Um, and also I, I'm always happy to help. I, I truly am. Um, you know, we're not hiring right now, but I've got a lot of friends in the industry who are so, um, or maybe I, I have to connect with one of your uh, career advisors for that. But either way, you guys know where I am. You know well, where to find me. Alex, sorry, I'm looking at the screen here. Uh, one questions. last question for you. Can you introduce me to Tom home. Brady so I can be his best friend? <laughs> I will say get in line because there are about 17 people in front of you. I'm sure if you met him, you would be his best friend because that's just the kind of person he is. Well, you he literally, you like that, uh, but I, I just had in a to, room with him. To throw that in there. Like as a... You've known him for years. Um, well, Alex, thank you. Yeah. No, it's, thank it's you so good. much for your presentation it's today. Good. It's a really thank interesting you, look Jeff. sort and of inside the world that a lot of us sort of see from the outside and then to hear you talking about your experience and that's, you know, the positive things that you have to say about it and the work that you've done with Tom Ford International is really neat to see. So uh, I, on behalf of all of Boston University, I want to thank you for, for taking your time and, and sharing your experience with us today. My thanks also go out to all of our guests for participating, and I thanks, specifically guys. want Have to a thank great those day. of you who've donated Talk to you all soon. in the past. We literally wouldn't put programs on like this without your support. Uh, we have another excellent webinar coming up in early November. Uh, just on November 8th, we'll present how to zenize your tech to be a productive work warrior, something I'm interested in learning more about myself. Uh, I encourage all of you to visit our website at bu.edu slash alumni slash events to see the full schedule of opportunities coming up in a city near you or online. And as always, if you or any BU alum you know would be interested in presenting a professional development webinar or an industry insider showcase like the one you saw today, uh, feel free to contact me at the Alumni Relations Office or by email at jtmurphy at bu.edu. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your time. Have a great day or a great evening wherever you might be.